Hey everyone, just thought I would do a little uh, clip for you on gift giving since we are right at the holidays here, right at Christmas time. One of the things that challenges a lot of people is how do I pick out or give the right gift? So I, I am a huge fan uh, of Dr. Gary Chapman. Many of you have heard of him. I uh, actually have had the pleasure of working with him on some occasions, but he wrote a profound book called The Five Love Languages. Okay, a lot of you have already either read this book or heard about it. If you have not, you can go to his website. It's fivelovelanguages.com. That's the number, fivelovelanguages.com. And one of the sections are quizzes. So if you have do not know what your love language is or what the love language is of your significant other, you might just ask them to go to this website. It's actually really quick. I just did it before I did this just to make sure it is quick and efficient. You can find out what your primary and secondary love language is really uh, in under 10 minutes, probably under five minutes if you're really quick. So what you do need to know uh, for these tips to be helpful is what is the love language of your significant other, your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, the person you're trying to give a gift to. And while you certainly can adapt some of these to uh, other people like friends or your kids, I'm focusing this primarily on the significant other since that's a really important person to buy for this holiday season. The five love languages, in case you don't know yet, are uh, actual gifts. Okay, so this is not going to be the most helpful. I'm going to focus on the others, but I will spend a little bit of time talking about people with the love language of gifts. Uh, physical touch, words of affirmation, quality time, and acts of service. So those are the five. Again, gifts, uh, words of affirmation, physical touch, uh, quality time, and uh, acts of service. Now, for me personally, my love language, primary one is gifts. That was no shocker when I just took that little quiz. Um, and we can be challenging, uh, so I'll leave that one to last. My number two is physical touch. And so for a lot of you, you have a, a partner who either their primary or secondary love language is physical touch. So no, this doesn't mean you get to go, hey, let me give you a hug, that's your gift for Christmas. What it means is uh, let's think intentionally about how to maybe give a gift to someone whose primary love language is physical touch. And by the way, uh, again, if you don't know about this. It means how do I receive love? What makes me feel loved? What is the language that makes me feel your affection and love the most? Because if you're not speaking that person's language, you could be giving love in the way you demonstrate it and them never really feeling loved because they didn't receive that message. So a person with physical touch does need to be touched, hugged, receive physical touch. And oftentimes, we get that confused a little bit with our significant others thinking it just means sexual touch. Well, sexual touch can be great, but we also want to incorporate, especially for you men who are trying to give a gift to your female significant other, uh, don't just assume that just means having sex with them. It also means non-sexual physical touch. A few things meaning uh, give them hugs, yes, but also making sure you hold their hand that you also put your arm around them or give them non-sexual physical touch when you're in public places. If you're sitting in church, you're going to a movie, you're just riding in the car, you wanna reach over and hold their hand. That will be very meaningful to someone whose love language is physical touch. But also you can give gifts, both those that don't cost anything and those that do have a price tag that are corresponding to the love language. Let me give you an example, something you could do for someone who uh, their love language is physical touch. Make a little booklet. Now you can buy these too if you wanna go to usually a Hallmark shop or a card shop, they'll often have coupon books. But if you wanna make one specific for somebody whose primary love language is physical touch, fill a little coupon book, you can make it, uh, if you're really crafty, you can physically write that out. If not, you can uh, use your computer, the internet to help you make these little coupons, but make coupons for things like a shoulder rub, you know, a scalp massage, a foot rub, and all of them involve some sort of meaningful physical touch. Give that to your significant other. 
for things that cost a little more money or a little more uh, financial commitment involved, if you have a bigger budget, actually give them a coupon or gift certificate for a massage, for something that involves physical touch. Now, also people who generally have a primary love language of physical touch really like um, things that feel comforting and soothing on the skin, that have that sort of uh, physical um, sensuality. And so think about soft, cozy, comfy, something that feels wonderful against the skin for a gift. A really super soft robe, cashmere gloves, um, a wonderful, uh, soft, cozy pair of pajamas, something that just feels really sensual. And it may be that your loved one wants silk pajamas or maybe just fuzzy, furry, wonderful, cozy. But think about that when gift giving, if physical touch is their primary love language. All right, for the second love language, let's talk about quality time. This is really important and this can be done again on a budget. We're talking about some things that cost no money to give and that is set aside time to spend with that person. That means say, I'm going to set aside an evening or maybe even a whole day to spend with you. What would you like to do? Spending quality time with that person means you being with them, but it also means shared experience. One of the things that I always ask for from my husband is something we can do together. A date night, it might be going to a special restaurant. Uh, my husband has already given me one of my quality time gifts for this holiday. He went with me to see The Last Jedi. Yes, I am a huge Star Wars fan, huge, crazy, obsessive Star Wars fan. My husband, not so much. Yeah, he doesn't love those movies, but he went with me. He got me tickets on opening night, the really high-end tickets, 3D, reclining seats, really good, the very first showing, whole works. So that for me was a quality time gift. Not only was he spending time with me doing this, because remember quality time for this person doesn't just mean, hey, I'm giving you tickets to go see this movie or this play or this show. It means I'm going to go with you to do this thing. Even if they know that this thing is not something that you're all that jazzed about, don't love doing that much, it makes that gift even more significant that you would spend quality time with your loved one doing something that's really meaningful to them, okay? All right, the next one is words of affirmation, okay? Um, this is really important and it can be very profound in gift giving. How do you give words of affirmation? Well, I have a few ideas. First of all, consider taking time to write a letter. Write a letter to this person about all the things you love about them, what they mean to you. Um, I also like it if, if you're a creative person, you can take that letter and turn it into something like a poem, a song, but it should involve something about that person, what I love about you, what I admire about you, what I love most about spending time with you. But find the words to express what that person really means to you. Now, I know that can be really challenging for some of you. So if you are not a poet yourself, you go, hey, I'm no Shakespeare. I really love this person, but that's really hard, Jennifer, to write a letter or a poem. You can cheat a little bit here. You can go online, find a poem that really captures the essence of that person. You can also um, look up some words. You can maybe find uh, and borrow the words of someone else in actually expressing your feelings. Make sure it comes from the heart and that it expresses what you love or value about that person. Also, people who have a love language of words of affirmation might love words, the importance and meaning of special words. And those words can be on a shirt, a sweater, it can be on a piece of jewelry or even a piece of art. Now, you just happen to be in luck if your loved one has a love language of words of affirmation because right now in the marketplace, these words are really big in fashion, in jewelry, and the meaning behind them is they are um, to bring intention. You might have seen me in doing a lot of uh, videos have these shirts that have words or phrases on them. I'm big on those too. And know that it's really uh, important that you put those 
meaningful words um, on something important to give to a person whose love language is words of affirmation. So it can be something encouraging like, uh, you are beautiful. It can be something about your feelings for them, like you are loved. One of the things I'm seeing are shirts and pajamas with love you to the moon and back. That's often what we say to our children or young people in our life, but that can be a great message for someone you love. So think about looking up those shirts, pajamas, again, pieces of art to sit around the house, something that has powerful, meaningful words on it if their love language is words of affirmation. All right. Last, uh, before we get to gifts, is acts of service. This is also a really easy one to give at the holidays. You yourself, for no money at all, can do something meaningful to a person, for a person whose love language is acts of service. You know, it can range from anything from doing household chores to doing something that they have on their list to do just to help them with time when they're really busy or stressed out. It can be simple things like take walking the dog or scooping the cat litter boxes. It can be cleaning the kitchen, doing the dishes for a week. Again, those little coupon books, this time though it's not for physical touch, it's for those things around the house really pitching in to do for that person. And they can cash those little coupons in whenever they need them, when they're feeling stressed out, when they're overwhelmed. Those little coupons then, again, are for those things like maybe washing your car or um, maybe vacuuming, if that's the chore that you hate, doing laundry. For people who love acts of service, for whom that is their love language, doing meaningful things for them uh, sometimes just mundane things, but things that would save them time, save them stress, or show that you care and love them are really what's important to them. Also know that there are things that you can do that do cost money that are really meaningful for people that want acts of service. Say you have more money than time, again, this holiday season, then actually pay to have someone come and clean that person's house, maybe maid service, even if it's one time or a couple times or even a whole week of house cleaning. Maybe it's pet sitting services. Maybe it's something that you can go out and pay for that will be uh, a great service to that person. Sound good? Okay. Hopefully you've gotten some creative ideas. Now, what about those challenging people like me whose love language is gifts? all right, I'm already stumped and want to give this person and you're telling me that what they really want are gifts. Well, let me explain a little bit something about people whose love language is gifts. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be a big gift. What is really important is number one, you're thinking about them. Because for people whose love language is gifts, this external thing, maybe just a pen like this, it's the time you took to think about them and that you know them well enough to know what they would like. Now, you need to know a few things about your significant other. I hope you already do, but these are a few questions that you have to ask and retain if you're the person you love, their love language is gifts. You need to know their favorite color or colors. You need to know what kind of things they love. You need to know what they don't like at all. You need to know things like, especially if it's a female, her favorite flower. If it's a man, his favorite sports team. You need to know what is their favorite TV show that they like to watch. What's their favorite food? What do they love for snacks? What do they love for meals? What do they love in terms of uh, movies or, or things like that? That will help you buy the right gift. Because for a person whose love language is gifts. It's not just about buying stuff and it's not about the material things. It's about number one, do you know me? And number two, will you take the time to think about me? Doesn't have to be big gifts. And in fact, let me recommend something. If your loved one's love language is gifts, break up that budget and give them something special every day during the whole Advent season. When I was growing up, that was one of the most special things my mom did. By the way, her love language was gifts. My love language was gifts. So it really helped. But she would give me a little small gift 
on each of the 12 days of Christmas. So it could be something like I mentioned, as small as a pen, but this happens to be a Lily Pulitzer pen. You ever heard of Lily Pulitzer? Okay, if you're a man, you probably haven't. If you're a woman, you go, yeah, I've heard of that. Uh, she's a designer and I just really love the colors and the prints of Lily Pulitzer. Her things can be really expensive, so you don't have to buy a lot. You can buy just a pen, but because it's something that is meaningful to that person, a color they would like, a print they would like, um, then it would be really meaningful to them that you took the time and energy to pick out something. Again, it can be their favorite candy bar, their favorite brand or flavor of tea, and just give them a little something that lets them know each day that you're thinking about them. Hopefully, these little ideas gave you um, a little bit of inspiration for showing the person you love how much you love them in a more meaningful way this holiday season. Hey, before you go, if you found this helpful or you really liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe below, and tell your friends.